Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pablo and today I would like to talk about memory monitoring on Android and everything about that. So we will cover how to measure memory footprint and memory usage of different Android apps. But more specifically, we will dive deeper into some use cases, how, how to make it more actionable and specifically how to detect memory leaks on Android uh, in ANB tests and focusing on production uh, use cases and apps. So a few words about me. I'm Pavlo. I'm a Google developer expert for Android and Kotlin. Currently, I work at Meta, at Reality Labs, uh, doing different stuff regarding uh, virtual reality. However, the contents of this talk is related to one of my previous job uh, at Lyft, where I was the part of mobile infrastructure team. And basically, uh, the, the topic that we are today going to talk about is actually powering uh, Lyft Android apps and monitoring different uh, types of performance metrics, including uh, memory usage. So since we're talking about memory metrics, I think it would be a good idea just to refresh the definition of what, what do we understand, what me memory leaks are. <clears throat> so memory leak usually occurs when objects in the application memory that are no longer needed are still being referenced by other components of the apps, like classes or something like that. So they cannot be garbage collected. And this leads to a gradual buildup of unused memory. And the key word here is gradual, which means that there is no like strict feedback loop. So when a memory leak happens, you won't see like, you know, see, like instant, like visual representation of that. It, it builds up uh, from uh, over time. And usually it, for first it just starts to impact performance. So your app might feel slower and like different parts of the app. So it's hard to determine like what caused it. Also, then the application becomes unresponsive and finally it will crash. So, you know, when, when, the, when the performance of the app slows down, you can live with that kind of, but you know, when the application <clears throat> is unusable, <clears throat> but when the application is unusable and unresponsive uh, or crashes, it just showstopper and you know, your product is not as good and cannot provide uh, value to users. There are a lot of existing tools that help to work with this problem and detect memory leaks. Uh, these are great tools like Leak Canary, uh, which helps to identify memory leaks in debug builds while, while you're using the app. Also, there are good profilers like Perfetto or Android Studio Memory Profiler that give you so much information about different aspects of performance of your app. However, they have one common problem and it the problem is that they're aimed at local profiling. So usually when you have a debug build or a profilable release build, you can use them to some extent and identify the performance of your app. But because those are not production builds, you will need to use them locally and perform some manual testing, maybe even apply some automation. But the problem with this approach is that it is hard to predict all possible circumstances of how the application will be used when you're just trying to test it manually. Even if you have a great QA team, you need to do it uh, consistently every with every new release to make sure there are no regressions and stuff like that. Uh, because there are a lot of factors that make it harder. If your product re relies heavily on feature flags, you will have a bunch of permutations of feature flags that lead to you know different, like so many use cases. For example, you have one feature flag, uh, and behind it, uh, you have like two more feature flags and so on and so forth. So like, you know, this branching makes it impossible to cover all the cases manually. Also, you have different types of Android devices in production. And yeah, it's hard to predict uh, how, how, how the app will behave on them. And there are other conditions. And I specifically just specified like other conditions because usually you don't know what you don't know. There are a lot of unknown unknowns. So it's, it's good to, to cover everything in production. So like when you use the application in production, you track different types of use cases, like all possible scenarios that your app is used, especially if you have a, a big user base, it will help you to have a better understanding of how your application behaves. So yeah, the goal of the talk is to discover memory, how to measure memory 
usage of the ap application, understand what is the memory footprint and how to measure it, and also specifically how to detect regressions in in the tests. We also look into some tricky use case where a memory leak was detected at Lyft, which was happening at P99, especially since this conference is called P99 Conf. This will be interesting to to take a look. All right, so to start this topic, we first need to identify what kind of metrics we want to we want to track and capture. Um, the problem here is that there is no ultimate memory usage metric, uh, which like you know would be kind of useful and obvious, but yeah, you know, in general, in real life, it's not that simple. So there are different types of metrics that are useful for different use cases, and there is no perfect metric. There, there are always trade offs, so you need to kind of, if you want more precision, you will sacrifice performance and vice versa. And also there are different sources when you can get those metrics so you can retrieve them on Linux uh, using like Linux system file structure. Why well, I mean Linux because Android is based on Linux kernel and some system file structure uh, from Linux is preserved on Android. So those are kind of like pseudo files where you can find a lot of information about how is your operating system behaves, so like what is the state and stuff like that. And also we'll see some Android SDKs that can be helpful for retrieving those metrics. And when thinking about metrics, especially when you realize how much, how many different metrics there are, it's, you know, it might be uh, challenging to decide, okay, so where do, we, do I start? And the idea that um, I had is that let's just look at the Android Studio memory profiler, you know, the default tool that is bundled with Android Studio and see what kind of metrics they display and try to replicate it. So here is the example of like a screenshot of Android Studio memory profiler. Uh, it displays a bunch of metrics and it turns out those metrics all together can be retrieved using, and like they all together come to the proportional set size. So this metric shows the amount of private and shared memory used by the app, where the amount of shared memory is proportional to the number of processes it shares with. So basically, if you have three apps, and if you have three processes or apps, which is the same thing in most cases, uh, and if they are sharing three megabytes of memory, so each process gets one megabyte in PSS. So PSS consists of many types of memory, but you know one portion of that will be dedicated to shared memory, and this will be one megabyte. Yeah, and it's convenient because it's used by Android Studio Memory Profiler. So we can actually, you know, when we retrieve this metric, we can be sure that this is a correct metric because we can compare it with whatever is shown in Android Studio. Uh, there are a few ways to get it. Uh, just like, you know, simple code snippet, how to do it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. You just use Android Debug uh, API. You create an instance of memory info. Uh, you write this data use the back API to write some data in it. And eventually you will get a hash map with key value pairs of showing what kinds of memory usage uh, and metrics you have. So here is like the contents of this hash map. You have different types of memories that are used like code, stack, graphics, Java heap, native heap, and so on. So like, for example, one interesting thing is like system memory, which, which system like, you know, group, which basically includes all the shared memory. And you have a total PSS which is like some of everything uh, above it. And this total PSS, if you need only total PSS, if you don't need to have any breakdown, you can just use debug, debug uh, get PSS, and you will get this value in kilobytes. So if we go back to the Android Studio, so the total PSS, this is like the highlighted uh, value here, uh, but you know, you can also get some breakdown. So yeah, when, when you run this code in production, you will see that it shows the same the same data and I'm, I'm in the same data to, to the Android studio. There is also another kind of metric, which is called USS unique set size, which is like almost the same as PSS, but excluding the shared memory. So you have only memory private to the process, which is maybe a bit um, more precise, but <clears throat> generally it, it could be derived from PSS metrics on Android. So in order to get it, you still need to get PSS metrics using the memory info object and the debug API, but then you'll just extract different, like few parts of it. You will get like total private clean memory and total private dirty memory. When you sum it up, you will see the USS metric. Uh, just like a refresher, 
uh, about dirty and clean memory. Basically, dirty memory includes pages that have been modified by the app at runtime, so they must stay in, in the ROM because there is no equivalent on the disk. And clean memory is like an unmodified memory of a file, uh, an unmodified copy of a file in memory, and it can be cleared if not used pretty safely. So basically, a clean page can become a dirty page when it's no longer, uh, it, it no longer contains the exact copy of the file. So, and usually it happens when you have some logic in the application that you know, makes some modifications. And basically, when we, when we get the USS, we just need to sum, sum up those two types of memory. <clears throat> so these are metrics are good. You know, they show precise data, uh, <clears throat> similar to Android Studio. However, calling those APIs from debug, it can be performance intensive. So it's not the best idea because you need to collect those metrics regularly, which is not the best idea in general because you know you'll have some performance implications. It's not a good idea to have a performance monitoring tooling that itself degrades the performance of the app. So there is another one, there, there's another kind of API for PSS, retrieving that, which is like more, which is faster, but there is a catch. It has a rate limit uh, to you know one call per five minutes. So if you try to call it more frequently, it will just return the cached result. So if you need to monitor the state of your app like once per minute, it's, it's not a good API because you won't get the precise data. So yeah, it's not that useful, but I just wanted to share it for like to have a full picture. So given with all that said, there are more efficient metrics. And one of them is resident set size. Um, it's, it's basically the amount of private and shared memory used in the app where all shared memory is included. Similar to, to PSS, however, if three processes share three megabytes, each process will get three megabytes in RSS, which is kind of doesn't make sense from the first you know, glance because it's kind of pessimistic metric. It shows more memory than the app actually uses. But the good thing about this metric is that it's much more, it reduces the performance overhead. So it's pretty easy. It's very easy to get the value of this metric. So in order to retrieve it, we just go to the system uh, file structure of the on the Android device. We just read the statm file from proc slash pid slash statm, where pid is the ID of the process, which you can easily retrieve in the runtime. So when we read the file, the file consists of a bunch of numbers, and we just need to refer to the Linux documentation, which will tell us that the second value is actually the resident set size, which is represented in pages, not in kilobytes. So in order to convert pages to kilobytes, uh, we just need to know that in most cases, the default page size um, on Android is four kilobytes, not in all cases with the new releases, but you know, for simplicity of demonstration, let's assume it's always four kilobytes. So yeah, this way you will be able to retrieve RSS metric. In general, when comparing USS, PSS, and RSS, USS will be always the smallest one because uh, yeah, it has only private memory. PSS will be bigger because it has some portion and propor proportional part of the shared memory, and RSS is the biggest one because it includes everything. However, RSS is more performant, so that's why we we ended up using RSS because it doesn't matter if it it's pessimistic because if you're comparing two different timestamps on the timeline, uh, they both include you know all the shared memories, so it's still uh, easy to differentiate the values. All right, so once we decided how to uh, collect metrics, what metrics to collect, we need to evaluate the data. Uh, usually, we need to you know since we are collecting this data in production, we need to report it to server. Uh, some you know backend service for, for further like analysis and building observability tools and stuff like that. So we can report uh, snapshots of you know of memory metrics on every UI screen or just like regularly with some period, for example, once a minute. And you know, first one might be useful if you want to create a ranking of your screens. You know, which screen contributes most to the memory usage. It's still not perfect because if you have some background work that is happening while the screen is being displayed. You know, it's still not related to the screen, so maybe it's not that precise, but, you know, it can give you some, you know, room for, for turning around and see, like, what, what, what best works for your use case. So once you report the metrics, uh, you can compare it, like, with for A and B tests or, like, for compare uh, values between the releases to, to, to see the regressions. But, you know, 
with like empirical empirically when working with those metrics, it was discovered that it's especially useful when you're working with ENB tests. Uh, it can be product ENB tests where you have like where, where you are rolling out some new features, or it can be some infrastructure ENB tests. Maybe if you if you're tinkering with like network stack that you have, especially if it relies on some C++ code, uh, might be useful. So usually you have two variants of the application. It's, it's treatment and control. And yeah, basically treatment, it's like a new version of the app that includes a new feature while control is just default version of the app. So based on that, uh, you can build a dashboard. So what we did at Lyft is, uh, you know, the Y axis shows the uh, memory footprint in megabytes and the X axis shows us the percentile. So basically it shows a break breakdown per each percentile. And as you can see on this graph, both lines uh, are the same for control and treatment, which means that there is no regression, but it's a good starting point. Next example actually shows the regression. We can see that treatment at every percentile actually increases memory usage, which means that there is some regression or like even memory leak because the app starts using more memory. And you can determine this pretty early after the rolling out the feature. You can quickly, you know, close the feature and move all the users to, to control if, if this is concern, if this concerns you and, you know, you have a clear idea of how your new feature impacts the performance. There are some additional metrics, which are basically, if, you, if you're going back to Android Studio Memory Profiler, they are native and Java heap allocated memory. Uh, they can be part of PSS, but, you know, since we discovered that getting PSS in production is pretty resource consuming and time consuming, we can use different API. So in order to get a GV, GVM heap allocation, we get runtime, we, we just use runtime API. We get total memory, free memory, just so subtracting one from another and we're getting GVM heap allocated memory. Same for native heap, uh, just using debug API. It's, it's, this one is pretty quick to get. Yeah, and the idea is that it's possible to build the same dashboards as I showed before with percentiles, but just for those specific metrics so that you have an idea where the memory leak is occurring. Is it like on JVM level? Is it like on some C++ level, on native level and stuff like that? Helps to narrow down the root cause if you identified the problem. Um, and finally, I just wanted to demonstrate like why this particular approach is useful to track metrics in production. So this is an example of uh, some interesting case in production that happened at Lyft, uh, where you can see that at every, at almost every percentile, the lines for treatment and control version of the app in AMB tests is the same. However, around the 99th percentile, it dramatically increases. We're basically what, what was discovered is that at some specific edge cases, uh, some like the app was going in, was running into the memory leak. And like, it was a huge, huge memory leak, not some, you know, simple one, which eventually led the app to, to crash. However, yeah, it, it, it was happening on a very small, you know, num number of use cases. It was hard to detect locally. I would say almost impossible. You know, and like if you don't have such tooling, you would even know in many cases that you have such problems in production. However, with this approach, you can easily identify that you have a problem with a new feature and you can quickly resolve it, which is like, yeah, which can significantly impact the quality of your features. And yeah, this is basically it. Uh, feel free to use my contacts and connect with me. I'm happy to chat more about performance and all stuff related to that. Thank you for watching.